we start by becoming aware of the body in the sitting posture. And we let the mind rest in this whole body awareness, similar to the way the body rests on the cushion or seat. And this whole body awareness can accompany us throughout the practice to provide grounding to the continuity of meditation. And before getting into the actual meditation practice, we take a moment to formulate to ourselves silently what is it that motivates us to meditate. What is our intention, our aim, our aspiration? And we make sure that the formulation we choose has an altruistic dimension, that there's some intention, some aspiration, some wish, that our practice benefits not only ourselves, but also is for the benefit of others. So we take a moment to formulate our motivation. And having formulated our motivation, we check in on the present condition of the mind. Meeting the mind where it is. And in particular, checking in for any of these five hindrances. Is there any sensual desire? Any anger or aversion? Sloth and topper? Restlessness and worry? Doubt. And when we find that any of these five finances is present in the mind, we know by now how to deal with them. We have our antidotes. And at times just mindful recognition can be sufficient. Sooner or later, a time comes when the mind is temporarily free from the hindrances. Whenever we notice that, we take a moment to rejoice, to arouse joy in the experience of a mind that is temporarily not overwhelmed by the five hindrances. And inspired by that joy, the joy of the mind, temporarily free from the hindrances, together with the joy of our motivation, our aspiration, we turn to the first Brahma Vihara, metta, loving kindness, benevolence, goodwill, being a friend to all. And in order to arouse metta, we use whatever tool we find appropriate, useful, whatever works for us. For some it may be just the word metta. Or it could be something more formulated out, like may all beings be well. Or it could be some image, maybe a kitten, a puppy, a flower, doesn't matter. 
whatever tool we find useful, we now use it to arouse metta. That attitude of being a friend to everyone. Well wishing everyone. Metta. And having aroused metta, we gradually diminish our effort and activity by learning just to abide in this condition of metta. Shifting from doing metta to being metta. to allowing our whole body and mind to be suffused by metta, filled with metta, drenched with metta, to become as if an embodiment of metta. Metta, whole body and mind, being metta. Having let go of the tools we earlier used to arouse metta, now we just abide. Just abide in this beautiful mental condition of metta. Relaxing into it. Resting in it. At times, it can be quite intense. At times, it can be very soft and gentle. Doesn't matter. As long as it is metta, whether strong or soft, we can rest in it. We can abide in it. No need to push to make it stronger. Relax into it. Being metta. And from having learned to relax into being metta, we can now proceed to open up, to open up to the boundless radiation. This is also a way of practice that is very relaxed, very natural. It is a little bit like Imagine a lamp, candle, that is surrounded by curtains. And all we have to do is just softly, gently withdraw the curtains. Front, right, back, left, all around. So that that light can shine however far it wishes to shine. We don't have to intensify that light. Our job is only softly, gently to withdraw the curtain. In that same gentle manner, we now softly, gently withdraw the curtain in front so that the metta, however soft or strong it may be, 
and shine in the front direction. We are not concerned with how far it shines. We are only concerned with opening up. Let it shine however far it wishes to shine. No need to push it, force it. Just opening up. By dint of not excluding anybody who might be in the front direction. By dint of not limiting that attitude of metta. And from the front we proceed, same soft and gentle manner, gradually opening up the right side to the right of our body. Just opening up. And we keep moving slowly, gradually, the back. And keeping moving, the left. All four directions open now. Metta open in all four directions. And to complete, we also open up in the direction above and below. Boundless metta. Metta chitto vimutti. Liberation of the heart. Liberation of the mind. Rometta. Temporary liberation from all confines, from all limits, from all boundaries, boundless mental condition, boundless loving kindness. Like the sun in the midst of the sky, shining in all directions. Metta. And if we wish, we could use the breath in support. For this purpose, the breath needs to be not the main object of attention but held in the periphery of awareness, as part of whole body awareness, so that the metta, the boundlessness of metta, can still be the main object of our attention. With the breath just known in the periphery, we can still discern whether it moves in or out, Natural breathing, no influencing of the breath in any way. But we could use that natural rhythm of the breath to maintain continuity through slight shifts in attention. With the inhalation, just a little bit more attention to that condition of metta, to the quality of the heart. And with the exhalation, slightly more emphasis on the boundlessness of the mind, the spaciousness of the mind. It's just nuances, not some sort of black and white distinction. Just slight nuances, a little bit more emphasis. 
When we give emphasis to metta, the spaciousness is still there. When we give emphasis to spaciousness, metta is still there. Just a matter of emphasis. Because it can help us to maintain continuity. Maintain continuity in this wonderful, beautiful liberation of the mind. Through metta, this boundless radiation of metta. But even with the support of the breath, sooner or later, mind is bound to wander. Whenever we notice, smilingly, Smilingly, without a trace of negativity, berating ourselves, getting upset. Smilingly, we just notice, oh look, mind has wandered. That is the nature of the mind. And we come back. Come back to metta, to the spacious mind. Distracted mind is much more narrow than this beautiful abiding in boundless metta. If it is a short distraction, we might just come back to the boundless radiation. If it is a longer distraction, we might decide to back up maybe even going all the way back to actively arousing metta. Then being metta. And then the opening up in the directions, front, right, back, left, above, below, to come again to boundless metta. Pamana, immeasurable, unlimited. And having familiarized ourselves sufficiently, with this experience of boundless metta, now or later, we may feel it is now the time for us to move on to cultivate the other three Brahmaviharas, the other three divine abodes in the same manner. Proceeding to compassion, karuna, Cultivating compassion and the clear understanding that this is not about feeling the pain of others. That this is much rather the joyful wish for others to be free from pain. It is joyful because it takes as its object something positive. Again, we may use just the word, perhaps. Karuna. Or some form of reflection, such as male beings be free from what causes their suffering. Some image that we find useful. Whatever works for us to arouse compassion, karuna,
and having aroused Karuna, again we find a way of becoming less active about it, so that we can gradually shift from doing Karuna to being Karuna. Settling back, resting in compassion, allowing our whole body and mind to be suffused by compassion, filled by compassion, drenched, becoming an embodiment of compassion. And when the time has come for that, we can move on to the boundless radiation. Gently, softly withdrawing the curtain in the front direction. Opening up in the front. And we keep moving. Softly, gently, to the right. In the back. In the left. Above and below. Boundless compassion. Appamana. Karuna Chito Vimutti. Unlimited. No boundaries, not excluding anyone. And again we can use the breath in support for continuity of abiding in boundless compassion with natural breathing only noticed in peripheral awareness. Every inhalation slightly more emphasis on compassion. This nobility of the heart. And with exhalation slightly more emphasis on the boundlessness of the mind, the spaciousness of the mind. And uh, sooner or later, we feel that it is time to move on. Move on to a sympathetic joy. Murita. A rolling, sympathetic joy. Again, maybe just the word Murita. Or some reflection, like may all beings enjoy the fruits of their wholesome actions. Some image. Or if we have difficulties, don't find it so easy to arouse mudita. A simple way can also be just to touch in again on that joy of the mind free from the hindrances, the joy of our motivation, and share that joy with others. 
sharing it with all beings. And from arousing mudita, sympathetic joy, we gradually shift to being mudita. Allowing our whole body and mind to be suffused, drenched and pervaded filled to the brim with sympathetic joy. Becoming an embodiment of Murita. And opening up front, right, back, left, above and below, boundless mudita, boundless sympathetic joy. Again, the breath can be our support. Inhalation, slightly more emphasis on mudita, sympathetic joy. Exhalation, slightly more emphasis on the boundless condition of the mind, the spaciousness of the mind. And having dwelled in boundless sympathetic joy for as long as it seems suitable to us, we find sooner or later time has come to move on to opeka, equanimity, the fourth and the consummation of the Brahma Viharas. If the first three can be illustrated with the example of the sun, metta, the sun at midday, shining on everyone, giving warmth and light, compassion, sunset, darkness is close by, yet the sun shines all the more beautiful, sympathetic joy, early morning sunrise, Birds are singing joyfully. Then Opeka is like the full moon. Doesn't shine itself, but it still reflects the sunlight. Cool, gentle. And similarly boundless. We start by arousing equanimity. Again, could be just the word, upekka. Could be some reflection, such as may all beings take responsibility for their own actions. Some image. Whatever we find useful to arouse Ubeka, equanimity. And from doing to being Ubeka, 
whole body and mind suffused by the coolness of equanimity. The soft and gentle coolness of Upekka. The stability of Upekka. Becoming embodied equanimity. And we proceed to opening up, front, right, back, left, above, and below. Boundless equanimity. And again, we can use the breath in support. Breath held in peripheral awareness. Every inhalation, more aware of Ubeka, that quality of equanimity. And every exhalation, slightly more aware of the spaciousness of the mind. And having dwelt in boundless equanimity for as long as it seemed useful, meaningful, appropriate, perhaps the time has come to do some walking. We can try to maintain that basic disposition of metta, of kindness, towards ourselves, towards others while walking in any activity. Metta is the foundation of the other Brahma Viharas and the one quality most directly relevant to daily life cultivation. The others, of course, have also their place in daily life. But Metta is the one on which we can base our bringing of the Brahma Viharas into daily life. Keep practicing like this. <laughs> 